Hey guys, welcome back to LJ's Kitchen. I'm your host, Tamika Miles. We are here with my good friend, Ms. Gina Wartload Hill. Yes. And she is going to help me make some chicken today. We're going to do chicken two different ways today. Uh, a lot of times we have issue. I'm just going to show you what I have so far. A lot of times we have issue on Sundays trying to get different meals out and trying to please everyone in the family. So a lot of times I like to make two different meats because when my kids were home, we I made two or three different meats for on Sundays so that I would have food for the week. And I didn't have to cook because for a busy mom, it's really, really hard trying exactly. to schedule your uh, work and school and so it's good to have at least two meat two meat that you can kind of mix things yes. with throughout the especially if you have a self-sufficient family that can kind of throw things together so that's yes. helpful and your your family self-sufficient well you know <laughs> <laughs> what husband and, and child are but yeah for the most part they are i mean good so we have we are going to make an apricot glazed broiled chicken today and it doesn't take a long time i usually try to cut the back out of the chicken and I'll do another video where I'll clean the chicken and show you how to cut the back out. Um, one of the things that I, I do notice on a lot of videos and a lot of shows that even when people pre prep the chicken, they do not singe the chicken and for African Americans, yes, yes. <laughs> that's like a big staple in our households and yes. in our families to make sure you dry yeah. dry the chicken off hold it over the fire or That's if you right. have a gas range i always say go to home depot and get like one of those torches yep and you can burn the hairs off if you dry it first with paper towel then you're able to uh r allow the hairs to raise up and it singes the chicken very simply and easily easily and also um and i'm not wearing gloves so if you see me <clears throat> touch chicken just know that I will wash my hands before I touch anything else, okay? Um, I always get the yellow skin that, that's on the drumstick. That needs to come off and all the bitty pieces on the inside that are like red and like, I don't want to gross people out, but you know what I'm talking about. And underneath <laughs> yes, the skin, do. you need to make sure you clean underneath to, the skin. So all the things that feel slimy, not so much the fat, but the slimy stuff, you wanna pull that from underneath the thigh meat and also the breast meat, okay? So I cut the back out, I seasoned it with the same thing that I seasoned my fried chicken. We're gonna fry this chicken. This is gonna be buttermilk. This was uh, soaked in buttermilk for hours. I wish I could have uh, done it for overnight. If you can do it overnight, do it overnight. Okay, 24 hours is, yeah. is best. But this has been um, soaking for about a good eight hours. Okay. So I cleaned it, um, seasoned it the same seasoning, except that on the broiled one, I added oregano only. So you can really do it the night before, like a Saturday. You can do it and the night before. Yeah, yeah. And, and it saves cook. a lot of time. So we have the oven preheating to 350. Actually, I'm going to preheat this oven for the broiled uh, chicken uh, on 400 degrees because we want it to cook fast, okay? So let me just turn that up. That'll just take a minute. 400, 420, 400 or 425 is good. So I'm gonna place this chicken. Now, does this chicken, do you recommend seasoning that the night before as well? Yes, or is it, okay. because if you season it the night before, the great thing is it gets all the seasoning um, goes throughout mm -hmm. the chicken. And you can even brine it if you want. So I'm just gonna put this in a pan. And as you see the back, oops, I'll just touch it and wash my hands, guys. The back is cut out of mm. it and all the nasty, things that's lurking in the chicken is all out of there it's gone now when you clean your chicken do you clean it with any just water or do you use any kind of so some people use lemon juice mm -hmm. or vinegars mm -hmm. and stuff like that i don't i clean it with water okay and i make sure that i just clean the insides is what's important to me as well as the outside okay any skin that's like yellow and hanging i kind of just pull it off because i want to make sure that i'm getting all the all of that loose skin off of the chicken i pretty much will purchase a chicken that is halal 
okay. where um, yeah, I like to buy halal mm -hmm. chickens because they're uh, slaughtered a certain way. And you can go on YouTube and look for that information because I don't want to get all into that and get people writing me letters. Right. Um, but it's cut, pro it's it's uh, slaughtered properly. Right. So that's why I use halal chickens. Okay. And um, it doesn't seem to have a lot of blood that's running from it. Okay. If, you know. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I did season this with the same thing, garlic powder, onion powder, seasoned salt, pepper, and I did use oregano on this particular chicken. Now, I did also, um, what did I do? Oh, I put it in a refrigerator to just let the skin dry out a little bit because that makes it crispy that makes when you sense. put it yeah. in a broiler, okay? All right, so we're gonna, I'm gonna wash my hands up. We're gonna get this in a broiler just like this, no water added. Okay. And then we're gonna make a glaze for it. So when it's about halfway cooked, then I'm okay. gonna um, put the glaze on it and let it finish in the oven. Okay, you okay. want to put it in the oven while you wash your hands? Um, yes, absolutely. <laughs> no, don't actually. That's part of my time top shelf. <laughs> um, when you are, when you are, uh, dealing with a chicken that is um, it's wet and you want right. to make sure the skin dries out a little bit. The same way we are going to take this chicken that's soaking in buttermilk. Mm -hmm. it looks it's good. soaking in buttermilk um, and we're going to um, pat it dry. So I'm going to take this and we will be right back because I'm going to uh, drain all of the buttermilk off and then we're going to pat it dry and then we are going to be ready to fry. All Ooh, right. Yes. yes. Hey guys, welcome back. We are ready for our fried chicken. Now we took it out of the buttermilk mixture and now we are going to fry it. In my bowl, I have two cups of flour, about a tablespoon of paprika. Also uh, seasoned my uh, fried chicken with paprika. Mm -hmm. um, what else did I use? I used uh, uh, onion powder, garlic powder, seasoned salt and pepper. So we're gonna put those same things in with our flour because we want to season every layer. Now let me ask a question. So, so paprika, yes. I never, I, I don't use it often as a seasoning, but I mean we've used it historically like as a topping on your deviled egg. Right. So does it really add flavor? I mean, it does. Mm, okay. Yes, it actually does add flavor, and there's different types of paprika. So oh. when I want something smoky, I'll use smoked paprika. When I, use, when I want something um, a little hot, I'll use Hungarian paprika. Okay. So that's really Oh, that's, that's interesting. Okay, I, that's I really never. That's really good too. We'll, do, we'll have to do something with Hungarian paprika because that's like okay. one of my favorites. Okay. Okay. I like spice. So I'm gonna just stir this around. So in the bowl, just went garlic powder, the same thing that I seasoned the chicken with that I just mentioned, some paprika. The paprika is also gonna give it color. Those things are stirred together. And I did help uh, offline. I did help with the chicken. <laughs> yes. Gina helped me with the chicken. Yes, she did. And make sure, well, guys, that you clean your chicken really, really yes. well. I was drying my chicken off and I saw another hair and almost passed out. Because I don't <laughs> like hairy, hairy chicken. So we're just going to flour, dredge this in the flour mixture. We're going to make sure it's all coated on both sides. And you're going to put this in a pot of oil and I'm deep frying this in a stock pot. You can shallow uh, fry this as well if you want. And yes, I'm using my hands, guys. I'm going to toss this out after I um, finish because mm -hmm. it's already contaminated with chicken. So I'm just going to lay this in there, skin down, and I'm going to let it go. So we're gonna let that go. That's on like a medium heat. 375. I am making sure that I'm gonna wash my hands, guys. Make sure you wash your hands after you um, touching chicken, raw chicken. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. And yes, I have a small chicken. This chicken was about four pounds. So I'm frying a whole half of chicken. I like the way, um, I like to fry a whole half of chicken and mm -hmm. serve it that way because a lot, of, a lot of times we fight over the breast or we fight fight over the um, the wings or whatever part of the chicken, the leg or thigh. And instead of doing that, I like to fry the whole half and you get the whole half and you can decide 
or swap out at dinner who you want yeah, to swap I out was, with. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it's probably more moist too to fly, fry it all together, I would think, yeah, as opposed I, to well, piece I by piece. Well, I know that dark meat the, is the juiciest. Mm -hmm. So most people like the dark meat. The breast meat is the largest, but it can tend to dry oh, out. Cool. So if you fry your chicken and you're frying it properly, the best thing is to fry it like this. And if you think that it's three quarters of a way done, mm -hmm. take it out and then finish it in the oven. So it'll still stay crispy, but keep it on a rack okay. so the air can um, right. circulate through right. it. Okay? And then some people have convection ovens and stuff like that. Um, convection cooks your food. This is a convection oven as well, but it cooks your food really fast. And um, sometimes, sometimes you don't want, don't you want, don't want that. Yeah. Certain things, you, I, I have to learn how to cook with a convection oven. Mm -hmm. I'm just old school. So again, you want to make sure you shake off as much. Cover it, but shake me. No Cover excess. Cover it, but shake yep. off the mm -hmm. excess. So the buttermilk is going to make it moist. I'm not going to put this in there. I'm going to let, I'm going to do one at a time. So that okay. I'll leave this sit, sit here. The buttermilk, while I wash my hands up, the buttermilk is going to make it um, really, really moist. And it tenderizes the meat, so it helps that breast meat to stay fairly. You can turn the water on. Yeah, it helps the breast meat to stay fairly uh, moist. So I let it sit in the buttermilk for about eight hours with the seasoning on, and then I still pat it dry. But all the flavors are, are permeating in the meat. So I want to wash my hands up, guys, and I'll be back. I'm going to clean all of this up. So right now I'm just going to um, put in the orange juice and some cranberry juices. We're going to make a glaze hmm. for the boiled chicken. Well, this is exciting to me. <laughs> yes. And then I use some uh, peach, no, apricot preserves. Yeah. Apricot preserves. And we're just going to heat this through, let it reduce halfway, and then it's going to have a nice, uh, uh, like almost syrupy mixture. Yeah. Okay. I mean, because your meats are always good, but it's nice to have a different flavor sauce to add yes. to it. So. So use juices. Um, you can use juices. Uh, also, uh, jelly. When you're almost finished your jelly, uh, put a little bit. You can use that as a salad dressing. You can add some oil. Okay. You can add. Hmm. Um, some vinegar and almost make like a, a, a salad dressing. Oh, that Maybe makes some sense. garlic. Oh, yeah. And even to this, if I wanted to add some garlic, but we already seasoned our chicken with garlic, mm -hmm. some ginger, you know, if I wanted to, I could add some of that. So use uh, your, your flavorings, your herbs, exactly. spices to make sure you get everything incorporated the way you want so it can have different flavors for your chicken. Sometimes, are you tired of eating chicken? I'm tired of eating chicken the yes. same way all the time, yes. right? Yes, yes, So we just want to let this go on a medium heat. Even not breaking it up into pieces and, and eating it like this, it yeah. just seems different. Yeah. Even if it, so I thought that would give like a wow yeah. factor because that's just a little different. So we'll yes. let that go. Okay. And we're going to start on our sweet potato bread. Okay. Have you ever eaten sweet potato bread before? No, I have not. <laughs> okay. So we are going to get all of the things set up for sweet potato bread. It's really almost like a dump cake. Okay. Sweet potatoes, sugar. Um, uh, lemon cake mix. What? Yeah. Lemon okay. Cake mix. Is that a so, secret? Is that a yeah. secret? It's going to be good though. So okay. I'm going to get everything together and we'll be right back in just a second. So sweet potato bread is something that um, when I was like in church, when I was younger in church, uh, someone used to make this all the time and uh, she really used to uh, bless us with it. So one of the things is I'm going to, the difference is I'm going to use a yellow cake mix mm. to make this sweet potato bread. So I'm not a baker, all of you guys know that, but one of the things is I try to find some shortcuts and still try to bake certain things. So I'm just going to dump everything in. So we're going to use one cake mix. You can use yellow or you can use lemon. I like the way the lemon flavor tastes. 
Lemon doesn't overwhelm it the, doesn't or just overwhelm probably adds we're not adds gonna put any lemon extract in it. Okay. So it doesn't overwhelm okay. it. Two, so four, six. I have six eggs. You need seven? Six, I need nine. Oh so my you goodness. Can use eight to nine eggs for this, I know. And I have about four to five pounds of sweet potatoes. And I am gonna put through a ricer. But before that I wanna show you the other ingredients. I have about a, a teaspoon and a half of vanilla extract. I have about a tablespoon of cinnamon, but you can make it to taste. And also a quarter teaspoon of uh, nutmeg. And you have to use a whole pound of butter. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you well, said, when you make you a pound said that cake, happily, like yeah, a whole pound of yeah. butter. <laughs> when, when you make a pound cake, you put a pound of butter. This is a pound oh, of butter. Oh my goodness. This is how much butter goes into a pound cake. Okay. And even like when you have a 7 up cake or anything. I'm going to put mine through a ricer. This is a device. I just, I just don't like the texture of the strings in um, sweet potatoes. So I bake these sweet potatoes. Um, mm. for about the smaller ones for about an hour the, the larger ones for about uh, longer about an hour and a half not boil just you bake. can boil them okay. but because I wanted the flavor of the sweet potato oh, did I get you no I'm good okay it will be nice to press it down so this is a ricer and this is how you you rice so you see all the strings that are in it still? yeah I don't want those strings on my tongue I don't like it. <laughs> so we're going to squeeze the rest of these through the ricer, and then we will be right back. So we are back, and we are going to use about a cup of sugar. We dumped all the sweet potatoes in with the cake mix. We're going to use about a cup and a half of sugar. And then, Gina, could you help me with the... You can dump all the eggs in. Now? Yep. Is there order? Well, you know what? Let's dump the eggs in since we're using this bowl. Um, let's dump the eggs in a little at a time as we're okay. mixing. So we have our vanilla flavoring, mm -hmm. um, the nutmeg, mm. and cinnamon. Mm. And we can always <laughs> add more. Some people like ginger in it, um, allspice, but I'm just like simple when it comes to mm -hmm. that. If I want to taste more of the flavor. And this really comes out good. So you just want to open these up. You can help me open now, these. Now, how long have you been, I mean, have you always used the the, the lemon cake mix or have you? The vanilla, oh, it's usually. Vanilla. And then okay. someone try, told me, try, to, try the, uh, the lemon cake mix instead of the vanilla. And I loved it even more because it gives the sweet potatoes a, a different type of mm -hmm, flavor. I'm sure. So everything you guys see is dump, dump, dump. I'm going to add some milk in. We have a pound of butter. We added a cup a of milk, cup, cup of, of milk, a cup of milk, right? A cup of canned milk. Mm -hmm. Or you can use whole milk if you want. I just wanted to use the canned milk. I hope this reaches. I've just gotten back into using canned milk for really? that reason. Mm -hmm. I don't want to splash because sometimes I'm okay. Splash. I'm okay. I'm here to cook. All right. Good. And it look cute. <laughs> Well, you always look cute. You always are amazing. So, Gina, tell me a little bit about what you do, what your daughter does, because you are very oh, active in yeah. your daughter's life. Yes, yes. Well, she's older now. She's driving, so I don't have to drive her around as much. But um, like a busy mom, I had a daughter who was involved with dance and theater. And so um, trying to prepare meals, good, healthy meals that didn't take a lot of time was always challenging. So um, this is very helpful. But on the other, you know, I volunteer, my husband and I, we support um, mentoring programs, so we enjoy working with kids. Wait, I want them to hear you. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Oh, no, I said my husband and I, we, um, we mentor, we enjoy working with kids, so we are um, part of a children's museum in East Orange, New Jersey. It's called the Jersey Spl Explorers Children's Museum, so it's a partnership between Youth Corps and um, the Board of Directors, so we have students who work for their GEDs six months throughout the year and then after they attain their GEDs they come and their community service uh, component is that they build build the museum they staff the museum wow. so it's um it's been about 20 years that we've been uh, partnering with youth corps but it's been really really nice That's so it's something that I enjoy how can someone get involved in that well we have a website so I'm www.jerseyexplorers.org um, or you could reach out to me on um, 
Instagram, since I'm old, um, it's the hills <laughs> underscore NJ. Again, the hills underscore NJ. So reach out to me, look at our website, definitely looking for partnerships with other organizations. So thank you for that. Yes, I appreciate excellent. that. I appreciate it. So we are just want to take a little time to incorporate everything in with this mixer. I should have used my uh, sand mixer instead of my hand mixer. But that's okay. If you have a sand mixer, you can use a sand mixer. I have both, but I wanted to just show you guys that this is a really simple and easy case. And Miss Kamika's feeding the neighborhood because yeah, this is a lot. <laughs> We had fried chicken, we did salmon cakes, we did macaroni and cheese. Off camera I did collard greens, um, making some potato salad. So we got a lot going on here. We can add in the eggs. Probably make it easier to blend. Yeah. Keep going. Now, is there a reason? Sometimes people scramble them before they or I mean you know just in general does it make a difference if you're adding eggs if you scramble it or well, if you... I know that when you now this I do know when you scramble eggs many times especially in baking um, it starts to um, make it too fluffy uh, okay. so you kind of let the mixture do it um, makes, that makes sense now, I do know that because when you make a souffle and sometimes you um, over mix um. your souffle it, <laughs> I've you know, never made a souffle, but okay. <laughs> Perfect. Can we? I probably could have used a bigger bowl, guys. Do you make um lemon meringue pie? No, I'm okay. not a baker. Okay. Hardly at all. Me neither. I'll take shortcuts. And I've made some dinner rolls and. Um, if you watch my Instagram between today and tomorrow, I will probably make some Hawaiian style bread um, or some rolls. So I'm going to do that. Nice. So you just want to make sure this is well incorporated. And I'm going to get this mixed up and we'll be right back. Hey guys, we are back. We are finished with our macaroni and cheese. I made some collard greens off camera and we have our gospel bird that's all crispy and ready. Our buttermilk fried chicken. Again, I like to fry the whole half of chicken so that nobody can complain about anything. We yes. also have one more chicken that's not quite ready in the oven, but we will show you at the end of this video. And I want to just thank Gina for coming on. Thank you and for having me. Always being a blessing to me. <laughs> She's a, a joy. And sometimes when you get good friends and you meet good people, it's, it's hard when they're not around and we don't get to talk every day right. but um, it's always a blessing she's always giving me advice about different things and it's, for mutual. it's mutual it's mutual yes thank yes you. you are a great person a good woman and a great chef thank you thank <laughs> you so much also the sweet potato bread is in the oven for about 50 minutes or until um, you stick a toothpick in it and it's clean you want to make sure that it's cooked all the way through. It's in a 350 degree oven and it is in there for 50 minutes. So we will check on that in a bit and we'll add this to our collection of food we have here today. One more time for your website. www.jerseyexplorer.org All right, so you guys, please, if you are interested in anything um, that Gina is doing and the platform that she has uh, is showcasing on today's show, Please make sure you contact her and bye for now. Thank you.